Hello, I'm Mishka, and uh, this channel is the Helsinki Renaissance, where we will be talking about arts and culture in hopefully the most Renaissance man like manner imaginable. So uh, stay tuned for that. Now, uh, I've been talking about Finnish cinema more than I ever imagined that I would when I started this channel, but that's only because uh, Finnish cinema out of nowhere became more interesting to me than uh, I could have ever envisioned when I started this channel. And uh, part of the problem or part of the something that is creating this situation is that uh, there are movies like the 1988 Moonlight Sonata directed by Olli Soinia that I have here on this DVD along with its 19 1991 sequel um, and uh, I don't understand why people in Finland aren't making more noise about films like Mullet Sonata because um, um, there are basically two kinds of viewers in Finland um, those who support what might be termed something like um, supermarket cinema and uh, Finnish production companies have found some sort of a uh, way to reach those supermarket cinema audiences and uh, good for them you know if uh, some people are able to have some good times with uh, the present condition of Finnish cinema good for them but then the other kind of viewers in Finnish cinema are those who are um, constantly complaining that we don't get any good movies made here in Finland because uh, all that happens is that kind of uh, supermarket cinema pandering. But uh, presumably movies like Moonlight Sonata directed by Olli Sainia would be the ideal antidote to those who are having bad times in this uh, present landscape because, uh, you know, the uh, 1988, let's say, horror comedy revisionist genre deconstruction, whatever it is, uh, you know, Moonlight Sonata is exactly the kind of movie having been made in Finland that uh, the people who criticize Finnish cinema claim that isn't being made in here. So uh, that's why it's slightly bewildering that uh, our um, would-be cosmopolitan city slicker viewers are acting like this doesn't even exist or, well, I shouldn't say that they're acting like this doesn't even exist. They probably genuinely don't know that this exists. So, well, that's why I'm doing some videos on this channel trying to get at least some people to uh, understand that uh, there is non-supermarket cinema having been made in Finland which very gracefully plays in the continuum of the international art house cinema. So, I'm sure there are lots of foreigners, or I don't know if there are lots of foreigners who would be positioned like this, but uh, there is some group of foreigners who don't have any kind of a complicated relation to the film scene in Finland and uh, the few Finnish films that they would have heard of, they would very effortlessly treat them with the same kind of um, mild interest levels that they would treat any also run art house releases. So even though Kutamu Sonati is a fairly pure uh, sample of uh, genre cinema, I think that we might treat it in the art house context for the lack of a better term. So, even though both of these movies are basically more grindhouse than art house, uh, I'm just imagining that uh, most of the viewers that uh, this these movies can have uh, right now are probably um, part of um, 
some sort of um, art house wheels because even though I don't consider uh, a movie from 1988 to be that old, uh, you know, it's it is from what I'd consider the modern era in cinema, but uh, for some viewers they think that uh, these are almost like uh, relics from the Stone Age. So uh, that's why uh, not everyone uh, will be uh, immediately interested. Uh, but anyway, so I already mentioned something about possible uh, genre deconstruction elements. Uh, and um, well, it's impossible to talk about um, Moonlight Sonata without seeing it in the context of the genre that it exists in. So, um, without knowing the specifics of uh, uh, Olli Soinio's aesthetic and uh, his um, uh, cineast M.O., uh, I'm assuming that uh, the inception for a project like Moonlight Sonata is that Olli Soinio was watching lots of horror films be very uh, repetitious inside the genre conventions um, and uh, Olli Soinio decided to start doing uh, fairly wild parodies of those genre conventions. So Moonlight Sonata is about um, two city slickers uh, going on a heartland holiday or something. So there's um, a fashion model who is having some hard times and sh what she needs is uh, some slight peace and quiet. So that peace and quiet is coming um, in the form of a holiday to some completely forsaken part of Finland where uh, uh, very deranged hillbillies live. And um, well, if you understand horror films to some extent, uh, there's basically uh, the final girl minus the ensemble that will be offed uh, in the process of the movie, so just the final girl, and uh, basically the rest of the movie is like some sort of a bizarre parody of Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. So, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't talk in a manner that would spoil the rest of the movie, uh, but uh, Anyway, uh, the precise tonal realities that Moonlight Sonata is creating, uh, I have, I mean, I'm assuming that the movie is basically taking itself so far with its uh, stylistic leanings that it's basically accepting being self-parody. So, but I'm assuming that... Uh, is the intended message in Moonlight Sonata is this kind of idea that uh, for some urban people they are dividing their nation between let's say town and country and then how it is that uh, the urban population views their rustic compatriots that kind of uh, uh, division is, you know, taken to beyond parody extents in uh, in the Moonlight Sonata. And uh, if I discuss the sequel, which uh, <coughs> the sequel is on some level most unwatchably bad, uh, it goes by the uh, subtitle of uh, Kadun Lakaisiat. Uh, but uh, anyway, I think even though the aesthetic merits of Moonlight Sonata 2 are almost, almost less than zero. Uh, I think that the movie basically redeems itself because it's one of those rare sequels 
that is almost parodying its uh, presence as an unnecessary sequel. So, um, I mean, I, I think Moonlight Sonata 2, it's made knowing that it wasn't going to be any good. And there's a couple of Matti Pellonpää uh, cameos that uh, are making the movie slightly more interesting. And uh, then, uh, then just the completely bonkers insistence on the movie crashing and burning uh, whilst, you know, going out guns blazing, uh, criticizing everything to do with, uh, uh, with both the uh, post globalized urban reality in Finland uh, and uh, basically what is happening there and then parodying also the uh, uh, would-be backwards rural population and uh, this is some sort of a bizarre carnival of uh, embarrassments there on full display in Moonlight Sonata Part 2. So even though I think Moonlight Sonata Part 2, it's bizarre to say, but it's almost like one might almost call it an ad admirably bad movie, uh, which sounds paradoxical, but uh, I, I think Moonlight Sonata 2 becomes almost unwatchable in a way that uh, it has like some demented kind of uh, dignified way of uh, not being good as a sequel. Like I'm not describing it particularly well for a person who hasn't watched it, but uh, you know the 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 bizarre thing is that uh, the Mulat Sonata one and two it, it's almost like they are each other's opposite. So uh, you know if. What I liked about the first Moonlight Sonata is that it was almost like a breath of fresh air in that uh, it was self-consciously generic as a story, but uh, it was directed with a really pristine control of the mise-en-scene and uh, it had a lot of uh, uh, stylistic flourishes that people usually don't associate with Finnish cinema, is that uh, if most Finnish directors just take a back seat and don't want to impose on the audience. Moonlight Sonata is more of that kind of, uh, you know, whether you want to call it like closer to like David Fincher style filmmaking, where the director does dare to assert the kind of uh, auteur presence over the filmmaking in that uh, if if I thought that uh, the first Moonlight Sonata was like a breath of fresh air uh, in how it was a very different kind of a Finnish movie where it was it was a cosmopolitan release but it was a cosmopolitan release that was basically mocking the idea of being a cosmopolitan release uh, in, in a way that uh, it, it was some sort of a, an impossibly charming, uh, silly horror parody, I guess. And uh, I just, uh, I very much like the first one, but then the second one, uh, well, if, I mean, if the Moonlight Sonata, the two movies, they present, let's say, an American influence to Finnish cinema. If, uh, if the first Moonlight Sonata is the good side of American influence, then the second one displays everything wrong with Americanization of Finnish cinema. And uh, pointless sequels just made as some sort of a brainless cash grab and a bid for... Uh, relevance or whatever we are associated with cinema, it's, it's all there, you know, being some sort of a bumper car situation in the 
enclosed uh, spaces. Uh, you know, it's I, I don't want to spoil the uh, plot details because if I, I mean, the left turns and then the be, things being turned up to 11 uh, nature in both of those movies, the great first one and the occasionally uh, unwatchable second one. Uh, you know, it, it is the kind of experience that uh, people should uh, try, I guess. And uh, that's why I, I don't want to talk too much about it. Uh, but um, but uh, but yeah, uh, the the reason why I keep insisting on trying to find some audiences uh, for Finnish cinema is uh, because um, there is a certain type of uh, class there. But um, unfortunately, these are probably such a acquired taste. Uh, releases that, um, you know, they are sidelined for a reason because, uh, you know, if if, uh, if they are something like uh, two quarters grindhouse, one quarter art house, you know, there's only a very specific kind of a viewer for them. But, uh, I mean, I have to say that uh, if uh, anyone is uh, uh, missing out on uh, some... Uh, Finnish cinema that takes the road less traveled, uh, they might be just missing out on, on uh, Olli Soinia's uh, uh, contributions to, to our cinema. But anyway, just uh, for your consideration, I, mean, I hope that uh, somebody was getting inspired. But anyway, that's, that's all. Thanks for watching.